Imagine yourself in a library, and there is a reference book with very important information. You need a copy of that information, but since it is a reference book, it cannot be removed from the library. You happen to have a pencil and a paper with you, so you transcribe a copy of that information onto the paper so that you can have a copy to work from at a later time. The spacing and the handwriting may be a little different, but the language has not changed. You can now leave the library, yet still have the information handy from that reference book. You take those instructions to a shop where they are going to manufacture an object for you based on those instructions. But the workers at the shop are not fluent in the language of the instructions. Those instructions need to be translated into the language of the workers if the object is going to be manufactured correctly. This very same situation is happening regularly in our cells. We don't often think of biological systems in terms of information storage and transfer, but this is a very important aspect of what cells do and how they function. The way that information flows within a cell is known as the central dogma of genetics. The cell has not only stored information in very specific locations, but also deals with multiple chemical languages. The main source of information for a cell is its genetic material, the DNA. For a eukaryotic cell, the genomic DNA is going to be found in the nucleus of the cell. The DNA contains all of the blueprints that a cell needs in order to build all of the proteins of that cell. Yet, like a reference book, the DNA is only found within the library. In this case, that library is the nucleus of the cell. The instructions are in the nucleus. But the sites for manufacturing the proteins, the ribosomes, are found in the cytoplasm, free-floating or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The DNA is not able to travel to the ribosomes. Again, the reference book is not allowed to leave the library. So a copy of that information of a part of the DNA is made. A photocopy or handwritten copy is transcribed based on the information of the reference material. In the cell, the structure that relates to this copy is a molecule of mRNA, generated by transcribing the DNA. The mRNA molecule contains the information of one gene, one section of the DNA, which codes for the production of a specific protein. The reference book cannot leave the library, but the copy, the mRNA, is able to leave the nucleus and come into contact with the ribosomes in order to assemble a protein based on that information. As we learned earlier in the semester, DNA and RNA are nucleic acids. They are linear polymers of nucleotides. Proteins are not made of nucleotides. They are made of amino acids. We need to be able to translate the message of the mRNA, which is in the nucleic acid language, into the language of proteins, the amino acid language. This process does not occur in the library, the nucleus, but instead at the ribosomes, where the protein is being made. This process of translation results in the formation of the protein in this new language. The protein is then able to perform functions within the cell. This is the central dogma of genetics in a nutshell. DNA contains the information. One part of that information is copied by forming a molecule of mRNA complementary to it in the process of transcription. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. The mRNA can then enter the cytoplasm, where it will be translated into a protein that can then perform a function in the cell. Now that you have learned a little bit about the central dogma of genetics, here are some questions to see if you understood that information. DNA can travel to the ribosomes for translation. True or false? Nucleic acids are made of lipids, amino acids, proteins, nucleotides. The flow of information in the central dogma of genetics is from RNA to DNA to protein, from protein to DNA to RNA, from DNA to RNA to protein from DNA to protein to RNA,
from RNA to protein to DNA.